Um, when we're doing exponential and logarithmic growth or decay, um, there's a couple important things. We've already talked about compound interest formula, right? And then continuous compound interest formulas. Um, and then sometimes I said, you know, guys, um, we already looked in that. I might give you a formula that's going to have you know, the growth or decay to represent or model a situation. But if there was not something to model a situation, I said we could always go back to our formula of y equals a times e to the rt. And again, the letters don't really mean as much as what do they represent. Well, remember, a is going to represent our final value. a represents our initial value. r is going to represent our rate. And then t is going to represent the time. Okay, So when we're looking at a problem like this, there was a lot of jargon that was in that problem. But it, I took out kind of the major components, and this is what I found. It says carbon-14 half-life is 5,730. 5, so what they're talking about, the half-life, Brittany, is that half of the remains is going to be around in 5,730. Okay. So let's say you have 100 pounds of something. If the half-life is in a year, after a year, you're now going to have 50 pounds of that. Okay. So the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730. That means no matter how much you have, in 5,730 years, you are going to have exactly half of it. Make sense? OK. Um, so it says a piece of ancient coal contains, all right, well, before we even get to that, we don't know. If I say, if, if we don't know how much coal we have, and I say we're going to have half of it in 5,730 years, do we know how, how that's increasing or decreasing? Do we know what our rate is? No. So immediately what I want to go ahead and determine is what the rate is. You can make guesses if you want, but we don't really know what the rate is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, if our initial amount was 10, what would our half-life be? 5. If our initial amount was 100, our half-life would be 50. If our initial investment was A, our half-life would be? One half of A. Very good. R, we have no idea what um, R is. But we know T is 5,730. Yes? Yes? So we need to solve for r. So to solve for r, what do we do? We isolate our e, right? That's our base. We need to isolate that. So we need to undo everything that's happening to it. Well, I'm multiplying by a. So I'll divide by a on both sides. Well, that's nice. They both go to 1. So I have 1 half e to the 5,730 r. I'm just going to rewrite those. So what did we learn we can do from here, guys? From here, we can ln, take the ln on both sides, or convert this to exponential form. But either way, let me put it over here, we're going to have the ln of 1 half equals 5,730r. Then to solve for r, I divide by 5,730. So r equals ln of 1 half divided by 5,730. All right, now, I'm not taking the exact value of that right now, because remember, taking the ln, is good, we're going to be approximating our answer. And I want to give us the most detailed answer, exact answer as possible. So I'm going to leave r in that format for right now. Right? Because if you calculate this, you're going to have to do approximate. right? Because if you do ln of 1 half, that's not an integer. That's going to be an irrational number. All right. So now, let's go back to the rest of the equation. It says, a piece of ancient coal contains 15% carbon compared to a piece today. So therefore, they found an ancient piece of carbon. And that ancient piece of carbon ha only has 15% of the carbon compared to a piece of coal today. So how long ago was that coal burned? So when it says how long ago, that means we're trying to f solve for what, what variable? T, right, for time. So what I can write is 0.15a equals a, right? Because if here's a piece of carbon, let's say you have, um, let's say a, a one that you had today was you know, 10 grams. Well, that ancient only has how much carbon? Well, 
be point, point 0.15 times 10, right? So we're going to have e to the r, which is ln 1 half divided by 5,730 times, what are the years? We need to figure that out. So again, we divide by a. Are you writing this? No. OK. Um, that's the issue. OK. 0.15 equals e to the ln of 1 half. Then I take the ln of both sides. <sighs> so my final answer is going to be ln of 0.15. Then if I divide this, that's the same thing as multiplying it by 5,730 divided by ln of 1 half equals t. Dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I did here is instead of dividing this to get this t by itself, I just multiplied by the reciprocal. So that's how I got that final value. So you multiply 5,730 on each side? Yeah. That's ln, that's ln of e. So remember, our rules of logarithm says ln of e is equal to 1. ln of e raised to the x is just equal to its variable. right? Because remember, this is base e. e raised to what number gives you e? 1. e raised to what number gives you e to the x? x. So this is base e. So it just equals our exponent, the ln. No. So now we just need to evaluate this. So what I'll do is I'll take my nice little handy dandy calculator. And I'll do ln of 0 0.15 times 5,730 divided by ln of 0.15. Five, and I get T equals fifteen thousand six hundred and eighty-two point eighty-one. Therefore, if a piece of coal, if a piece of coal only has fifteen percent of the amount of carbon, can you guys not talk when I'm going through this? If a piece of coal has fifteen percent of the amount of carbon as a piece of coal today. Therefore, that coal is 15,682 years old. All right? So a lot of you always you know, go ahead and wonder, for those of you that are